about saying that if you have any information about that story, you should get in touch with the Cambridgeshire Police. Right, next tonight, a beatboxer from Bletchley and Milton Keynes is celebrating becoming a teaching hit on the internet. Anthony Ashfield began his craft three years ago, producing drum and percussion sounds using only his voice, mouth and a microphone. But now he teaches thousands of people via the web. Kate Prout has been to meet him. My name's Fat Tony, I'm a beatboxer, this is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> On the beat in Bletchley, Tony practices his art for hours a day, wherever he is, much to the amusement of passers-by. <laughs> when you're sort of singing and you're trying to get children to listen to sounds, and I'd, I'd usually do that. I think it was awesome. Wow. Can you do it? <laughs> Using his tongue, lips, throat and voice box, Tony can emulate a repertoire of different percussion sounds. You can even do this for your GCSE music exams nowadays. And he does sound effects too. You've got the cricket. You could have sound somebody pouring a jug of water. If you want ice with that. Got a sound like a clown horn. I'm infinitely more confident than I used to be. I used to be really, really shy, really timid. Then, you know, once you got on stage in front of 150 people and made silly noises, that's it, everything else just pales in comparison. And now he's become a huge hit on the internet with his three minute tutorials for budding beatboxers. So we thought we'd put his skills to the test. So just go. <laughs> Brilliant. With a kick drum, just think of it as a B sound, so buh, buh. Ba, ba, ba. That'll be uh, so you just get. Burr. Then a simple snare is just a cur sound, so cur, cur. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> you do it, you're better than us. Go on, give us a little. That's sick, isn't it? <laughs> so we've made the poor people of Bletchley have a go at beatboxing. I guess it's my turn. Okay, Tony, do your worst. <laughs> <laughs> While I think I'll stick to the day job, Tony continues to make all the right noises for a very successful career. Kate Prout, Anglia News, Bletchley near Milton Keynes. I definitely think the cricket was my favourite. Well, I'm not going to try ice. to give I love it a go. The ice now. in the glass, that was very good. <laughs> if you listen carefully, you can just about hear the beatbox of our party from last night, the 50th birthday celebrations yesterday. Oh, yes, thank you so much, by the way, for all your calls, letters, and emails telling us just how much you're enjoying our dips into the Anglia archives at the moment. Tell you what, we are as well, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And tonight, well, we're really spoiling you with a whole treasure chest of gems. Here's Natalie Gray. <laughs> to see. If it's Basil's guest, it's bound to be a drip. <laughs> you are here on holiday, perhaps? Yes. And you? No, no, no. It was my wife's idea. She insisted on it. Tales of the Unexpected was a series that put drama from Norwich on the map. But tell me this. Why do you think I joined you here? Now, did you dance along like we did in our house to the opening titles? And that oh-so-sexy lady. And who was she, anyway? She was Karen Stanley, a 27-year-old secretary from Berkshire. She was only ever seen in silhouette and had to wear a white body stocking and tights with grease paint all over her arms and legs. I was just told to look, you know, sinewy and as sexy as I could. Everybody was talking about this, you know, series, and uh, it's very popular with a lot of young men. But no, it was this sort of mystery, mystery figure. Nobody imagined that quiet old Norwich could become such a hotbed of drama, but that's exactly what it became. I believe your name is Mullet. You know me, landlord. You know me very well. I think the drama was a very, very high quality. Um, it's difficult when you're doing it yourself to sort of say, yes, it was exceptionally good. But I think from a design point of view, we, um, we created something quite marvellous. Chief Superintendent Dell, please. Yes. 
In the 80s, Roy Marsden was cast in the lead of another major drama series for Anglia, based on the novels of P.D. James. Now, where were you between 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock this evening? Back in the 60s, Anglia had a go at another type of drama. Six years before Emmerdale, Anglia produced the first truly rural soap opera, and it was set right here in Hayden in Norfolk. <laughs> Jeffrey's in love with me. The Weaver's Green drama serial gave many unknowns their big chance of television exposure. That's Wendy Richard in Polka Dots, Kate O'Mara in a clinch, Brian Kant playing away, and that's a young Dennis Waterman and an even younger Susan George. I want to go to bed. I want to watch television. It was a pioneering programme but failed to be given a regular slot on the network and after 50 episodes the series was brought to a halt. <laughs> Ten years ago viewers voted Bygones its favourite Anglia programme. Dick Joyce was a very experienced studio performer even though he was untrained. But it's obviously not made for drinking because of these two things on here and I really would like to know what it was part of because it must have been part of something else. It's through the Bygones films that many traditional crafts and industries of the region and the skills and characters of those who worked in them have been preserved. Pop goes the weasel and Jack in the Box jumps out of his house which means it's time for romper room and this is Miss Rosalind saying hello to all the boys and girls here and to all my friends at home. Bet this brings back a few memories. Tragically, only two episodes have survived, and even they are a little worse for wear. Tell me, tell me. At the end of the programme, it was always the, the magic mirror, which was one of the most popular parts of the programme, because children would sit there waiting to hear their names. And I see Steve and Jean, there's Joy and Michael, and I see Lynn. And, and today, I'm still meeting grown-ups, you know, in, probably about in their 40s now, who remember romper room. David, will you ask Mr. Music, please? Please, Mr. Music, where will you pray? Thank you. I love your yeah. cooking. Do you? I, I love what? It. I love your cooking. What? Here, Patrick, here, Patrick. No, Sign excuse up. me. One of the most familiar faces, if not the most familiar face on Anglia television, was, of course, BC, the birthday club cat. Helen McDermott gave him his first job 30 years ago. We decided that we were going to wash BC, but what I decided to do, because I was a bit naughty, wasn't I? I decided to wash Michael instead. So uh, Michael didn't, unbeknown to him, we, we got the bowl and, the, and the, the, the shower cap. And anyway, we ended up washing Michael, but a lot of the water went in my face, and I, and I had my mascara, non-waterproof. Can you see your eyes? Your <laughs> <laughs> Mustn't noticed. laugh, mustn't laugh, no. <laughs> it was a laugh, and we, did, we laughed, didn't we? We laughed like a drain. He just used to play up, play up to me, and I think they actually liked that relationship that we had, um, and that they felt, you know, that maybe they weren't being quite so naughty that night because BC was being even naughtier. That's all for today. <laughs> 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 and that is all for today. <laughs> Natalie Gray, Anglia News. Pissy <laughs> stuff, wasn't it? Very naughty. <laughs> well, that kissing, terrible. Uh, anyway, here's fillings. what's coming up on the National News in a couple of minutes' time. On we have in a couple of minutes' time. Let's catch up with our weather now. Here's Amanda.